So we think there's kind of a global crisis in our lack of participation in shaping the world beyond our homes, our, our public spaces. And we see placemaking as a, as a tool and a process for challenging and supporting communities to take responsibility for the world beyond their home. Um, it, it's about connecting with each other, connecting with our places, uh, and, but the process of improving these places in small ways uh, is a magical process that we've sort of forgotten. But when people rediscover it, when they're offered the chance to talk about what they love about a place and to try to improve it in a small way, um, they, they realize they're experts in this and that they are, are born to do this as, as well. Uh, so I see the, the, the Imagina Madrid program is facilitating drawing this out in many people in, in a really powerful way. So we see leadership for placemaking coming from every sector around the world. And in some ways, in every part of the world, there's one sector leading. Sometimes it's the artists, sometimes the architects, sometimes the community activists, uh, the government, the developers, the foundations, the UN. Uh, our job is to make sure we go with that momentum, celebrate it, but then figure out who's not leading as well. So we're really excited to see this, a city government lead in the, in the way Madrid is here, and I think it's a model that we hope cities copy. Um, but we really hope for it to succeed. We th it needs partners from many different, from the community, le leadership from many different levels. So we see placemaking as a building the capacity of communities, not just delivering better projects, but government building the capacity of communities to do placemaking themselves. So I think we, we've all sort of forgotten how to participate. We've, we've forgotten how to, uh, to take responsibility. Um, and we've been told that experts have all the answers. Uh, and experts have a lot of creativity and we need a lot more of their expertise. Uh, but we need a facilitative leadership. We need, one, we need leadership that brings out the expertise and the passions of many different people. To create a place you need many different skills. Uh, so, so the biggest obstacle is breaking down the, bound, the boundaries, the, the barriers, the, the um, the silos between different departments, between different in a city, the, between different disciplines, and between groups in a community. And the focus on place and making small changes to a place is a really powerful way to break down those, those barriers. So our work started, Project for Public Spaces work started in the, in the 70s, really fixing failed public spaces. The, the, the downtowns in America were, were not were disinvested. They didn't feel that safe. They weren't places people were very proud of. Um, and people were approaching uh, public spaces as problems. And we said, well, what if we look at them as opportunities? What if we start to bring in life, not just design out people or just police places? Um, and this is, through that process, we developed placemaking as a proactive approach to engaging partners to take responsibility for uh, creating shared value. Um, and now we're seeing placemaking becoming a global movement. You know, not just an approach to improving public spaces and addressing problems of safety and health and equity and environment, but we're seeing it as a way to, uh, to, to bring together many different causes to more fundamentally address them and create collaboration and, and, and create a much more fun process for shaping our city and our world. So arts and culture and artists and, and cultural institutions are the are the early adopters to placemaking. They're, they're often the logical leaders to be the catalysts for it. Uh, they're, they're, they, they're able to envision you know, the potential of places quicker than other people, perhaps. Um, so we, you know, we want to support that and celebrate that. And we want to facilitate their role as facilitators of other people coming into the process as well. We think you know, arts and culture needs to be in a catalyst and and an outcome of good placemaking. In great places, art, everyone becomes an artist, or lots of people become artists, and it draws out the creativity of everybody. But to get there, it needs to not just be about the art and the artists. The art is a catalyst, the artists are a catalyst, and we need many different disciplines, ideas, solutions um, as well. And we need to not make people that don't feel like they're artists or creative, we need to make sure that those people feel welcome as well. You know, the, way, the way we engage you know, different people is we, we think when you, when in, in a small place, that it's hard to get people engaged in, in public spaces. Um, 
but when they're asked, they, they're, they have lots of ideas. So we have various tools, um, engagement tools, to sort of draw them out and help them realize that they're an expert in, this, in these spaces. They know what they do in a place. They know what they'd like to do in a place. Um, we focus more on the uses and activities. We don't ask people in a community necessarily to design it or to come up with the creative solution, but more of the functions. What, you know, what, what are, what, why do you love a place? What do you do there? And what would you like to be able to do in that space? And then that creates a programmatic vision that artists, designers can solve for. It draws more on their creativity uh, as well. Um, but the most important part of placemaking is is how the process builds the capacity to continue to manage and sustain a place. Because the intervention is a great catalyst, but uh, we, we need to develop the governance structure, the management structure for a space that is as local as possible, that devolves as much power as possible actually to communities to take responsibility, to fundraise, to, to, uh, to continually improve and evaluate, to have the debates locally around you know, who gets to use the spaces and, ha and how do we bring in people that are not feeling welcome. But ultimately, placemaking is best done at a very local level, and a placemaking process can build the capacity to do that. You know, placemaking is getting attention globally. We, we've, with working with UN Habitat, we've helped to make public spaces a global cause. Public spaces are finally understood globally. Placemaking is, is less understood, but it's a tool for adding purpose and meaning to, to spaces. Um, but it's still just seen as, as activation, as sort of nice, nice things to do to public spaces. And they're having nice impacts, and it's, and it's exciting, and getting people involved, uh, and showing that our, our public realm can change. Um, but I think the next challenge is how programs like Imagena Madrid are a catalyst for changing the way people participate in the cities, changing the civic infrastructure, the, the, the governance structures, to facilitate broader participation, broader change, uh, you know, broader shared responsibility in, in our collective environments. We also think that placemaking is about adding economic activity to spaces and, and, and how, how, how uh, and that we need to capture the benefits of this. We need higher, we need more shared value, but we also need to show that investing in this shared value supports private value, supports jobs, supports a vibrant localized economy that's grounded in and connected to place. The best public spaces in the world are are public markets and, and squares with active edges that create that support small scale retail that's that locally defined, locally responsive, usually locally owned. Um, so th this is it's an economic development strategy and a local economic development strategy that creates lots of jobs and and hopefully also sustains the management entities that create jobs for people doing placemaking and place management. Uh, these, if we create the right value capture models, we can sustain place management entities that are in charge of small districts and places uh, that may get some revenue from government, but start to get revenue from a more diversified stream of businesses and homeowners, revenue, direct revenue sources from events in these public spaces, as well as volunteerism and philanthropic contributions.